before you go into more detail. So, you said there are three parts of the stomach, right? Don't, there are five parts of the stomach. There is the cardia, which is the part that is in direct connection with the esophagus. Then you have the fundus, right, which is above the part above the gastroesophageal junction. Then we have the body, which goes from the fundus all the way down to the antrum, beginning of the antrum. And then you have the antrum, and then you have the pylorus. Pylorus is part of the stomach. Okay. Then you have the pylorus. So there are five parts. And then the stomach has what a lesser curvature, right? And greater curvature. For anatomy purposes, <laughs> I will not I can't say this now. The blood supply of the whole GIT is high yield. I may not know any anatomy in my life. But anatomy of the GIT, you must know it. Okay. Blood supply, you must know them. All the branches of the trunk, celiac trunk, SMA, IMA, you must know them. All the anastomoses, you must know them. Right. High yield. All right. So, going back to physiology, right? If you look at the, what cells do we have major? Which cells are abundant in the fundus and the body? Or the stomach? Parietal cells are born, right? Parietal and chief cells are abundant, right? In the fundus and the body. Which cells are abundant in the antrium of the stomach? The G cells, right? Which one is D or D somatostatin also, right? Okay, so D cells to somatostatin, right? D cells, G cells, right? Okay, so enterochromaffin cells are where? Also on the body. So they're the ones that make it stamina, correct? So what do you think about that configuration? So I have parietal cells, enterochromaffin cells at the top, basically, right? Literally above. And I have the G cells, as so much as at the bottom. Why do you think that configuration is, is, is important? Why is that good? Why should we have it that way and not the opposite? Okay. Okay. So if the predator cells make acid at the top, the acid will flow down. Right, which is the major so because pH is the major regulator, right? signal for that axis basically or the function of the stomach so if the predators has make acid the acid flows down and the d cells and the g cells can sense it and they will respond right accordingly so if ph is low they stop making g cells stop making gastrin d cells will make somatostatin and then blood flow will take this gastrin and somatostatin up, right, to the body and the fundus, and right, shut up, right, acid production. If the pH is too high, the gastric secretion is alkaline, then G cells will be active. They're going to sense that. Flows down, they sense it. G cells will now make what? Gastrin. D cells will stop making somatostatin. Gastrin flows up with the blood supply, right, goes up the parietal cells and the enterochromaffin cells, right? And stimulates what? Acid, right? Production. So we need that arrangement to maintain that loop in that way. Otherwise, if we put the regulators at the top, we put the effectors at the bottom, right? Then how would they sense? Blood can, we can't fight against gravity, right? Right, so acid can go back up. It's gonna be flowing down, right? So we can't sense it. Yeah, properly. Does this make sense? Yeah. That's why it's important to have it that way. And that's why H. pylori is one of the most brilliant, right? Mm -hmm.
Where does H. pylori colon lie, colonize in the stomach? H. pylori colonizes the antrum. That's where it goes. H. pylori will colonize the antrum. So what does it do in the antrum? How do you think H. pylori sur survives the acid? Acidic gastric acid. What does it do to survive? Gastric acid. <laughs> It produces urease, which is used to kind of neutralize. The end point of producing urease is to neutralize the acid at the antrium. So what happens to the pH at the antrium? The pH is consistently what? High. What if I would have on the G cells and some other start and D cells at the antrium? The pH is constantly high. What effect would that have on the G cells and D cells? <laughs> The D cells will produce less when the starting, and the G cells will produce more because they think the acid is alkaline, it's not acidic. They are going to be thinking there's no acid production. Does that make sense? Right. pH is high, the gastric acid is alkaline, or secretion is alkaline, it's less acidic. D cells sense that as okay, yeah, parietal cells are not being stimulated enough. Right, so they're going to be making more gastrin. So these cells will think, oh, right, parietal cells have been inhibited too much. So they will stop making somatostatin. So what happens to enterochromaffin cells? Enterochromaffin cells will be stimulated by gastrin and you're going to be making massive amount of histamine. All those things, histamine and gastrin, they end up in the parietal cells and stimulate parietal cells. Parietal cells will make more acid, more and more. By the time the acid gets to the antrium, it becomes neutralized. <laughs> right by each pylori gastrin we think oh god i'm not making enough gastrin i'm filling parietal cells let me make more makes more stimulates more parietal cells they make more acid by the time the acid gets to the antrum it becomes centralized that's when we panic again and be like oh i'm not making enough gastrin uh, these cells will panic again make more gastrin can you see the loop now what happens the acidity becomes more and more and more and more acidic. So acid that is going to overwhelm the protective, right? Mucous layer on the epithelium of the stomach and lead to what? Gastritis and ulcer. So acidic that it's going to spill into the duodenum and the alkaline situation in the duodenum, duodenum is not enough to neutralize the acid and also lead to what? Duodenal ulcer. And that's the pathophysiology of what? H. pylori gastritis. That's what it does. Now, it makes sense to me that when I'm treating H. pylori, I can't just give antibiotics. Based on what we just described now, I can't just give them antibiotics and that's it. Say goodbye. Mm -hmm. well. You can't. Because by this... Based on this pathophys, I now need to block what? Acid production. I must. That's why you must include PPIs in H. pylori management. 